Mr. Song, if I may come back to you, there's that part of, um, let's look at being proactive here, there's a part of dredging the waterways and channeling. That's a proposal that some people have put out there, seeing where we are now, what can be done, looking ahead. Yes, the rains have come, the rains are here. What can be done now, moving forward towards um, 2018, where there's likely to be more rain? Is channeling and dredging the way to go? Well, I think it's one of the legit. I think it's one of the legitimate ways that you can uh, mitigate what we're seeing. Keep in mind that uh, when you talk about this uh, river Benue uh, axis, much of this water comes from the Cameroon Mountain Range, and it comes down. Uh, as Professor said, uh, there was supposed to be a counterpart dam built by Nigeria to Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. So when you have excess water there, they have to release their water which now floods our own uh, states here. So we need to look at dredging, yes, and it has to be done by experts because if you simply dredge for the sake of dredging, all you will do is just create uh, a, a reservoir for more water to come in and maybe overflow its banks. So we have to be very strategic how we dredge. But beyond dredging, we need to do what we do in the United States. See, in the United States, we have a system of levees and barriers in these areas that are prone to flooding. And we know they are prone to flooding because if you look historically, you will see the, the watermark on buildings. You will see that flooding has happened for decades. Places like uh, some areas uh, in Ibadan, uh, some areas along River Niger, some areas in Kogi State. These areas are prone to flooding almost on a yearly basis. You drive around, you can see the watermarks as I have. So. Those areas, we need to evacuate the people. They are not habitable zones. Uh, when you evacuate the people uh, in places that are clearly flood plains, now you erect a barrier uh, or levee, depending on what, uh, what you want to call them. Uh, and these barriers are now very sophisticated. There are some barriers uh, that you build. They are made of concrete, uh, stone works and concrete uh, barriers. You also have sensors on the barriers so that when the water level reaches a certain level, it sends off a siren, it sends off an alarm system. So people are warned. You find that sometimes flooding happens at night. Uh, we tend to get a lot of our rainfall in the nighttime, so you may be sleeping. If you look at the pictures of those who perished in 2012, as I have, uh, so there's a striking feature you will notice. A lot of them are in pajamas or night clothes. So that lends credence to the fact that most of them were probably sleeping when the flood came. So you need a flood warning system in these coastal areas. Even Lagos, uh, some of those areas that we value so much in Lagos have now become flood uh, threat zones. And why is that? You have to look at the climate change factor. If you look at what is happening globally with climate change, you look at the Arctic region, Arctic region for eons of years has always had uh, ice. That's where the ice accumulation of the world uh, and the Antarctic zone. But if you look at satellite pictures that we have from the US, you look at 1985 picture and you look at the one they took in 2016, you will clearly see that the ice cover in the Arctic region has shrunk by more than half. Not only has it shrunk in size, and keep in mind too, the Arctic region is a massive area. It's, it's about 30 million square kilometers, which also happens to be the size of continental Africa, 30 million square kilometers. So it's a huge area. And half of that ice has melted over the past 30 years, and it has fed into the ocean. The Arctic uh, area there is interconnected with all the major waters of the world. It feeds the Pacific Ocean, feeds the Atlantic Ocean, which affects us. Uh, so the water level naturally is higher now. Mm. And not only has it shrunk in size, the thickness of the ice has shrunk too. So what am I saying? We are likely to have more flooding in Nigeria. We need to be proactive. I mentioned that states need to get involved. If you look at what is happening in Nigeria, and the federal government is overwhelmed when it comes to dealing with flooding in Nigeria. There's not enough resources. Uh, I was with NEMA director the other day. He's looking for helicopters to be able to do rescue. Uh, he's saying that the CIMA, which is the counterpart state level 
agencies are not fully funded, they are not functioning well. If I may so come in we here, we would, if you can just hold your thoughts, we'll have to take a quick break, but we'll be back shortly. Please don't go away. Welcome back. So we're talking about funding. Uh, Mr. Asongwa, if you could just round off your thoughts. You were talking about funding by NEMA. The, the DG was talking about funding for helicopters to go looking around the area. Yes, he was, he was basically saying that in terms of resources, uh, that they really don't have enough, which, which is uh, really the common story here with most government agencies. Um, the, uh, but the point I'm making is, we cannot have governors who look to the federal government to collect ecological funds. Uh, sometimes the money is diverted to something else that has nothing to do with ecological problems. We need to have governors who are proactive because every governor has a vested interest in protecting lives and safety uh, and, and property within the state. They, the governor is the chief executive officer, is the chief financial officer, is the chief welfare officer, is the chief... Uh, uh, so as some would say, is the chief servant of the state. So they have a vested interest. Prevention is better than cure. We know floods would come because the fundamental causes of flooding are still there. They haven't been eradicated. Uh, and when, from what we're seeing, you look at the, the kind of hurricane season we've had in the Atlantic, uh, and, and if you look at what forms and intensifies hurricanes, is a mixture of warm air and warm ocean. If you have that interplay, you get hurricanes. That also feeds the hurricanes. So those things that are happening elsewhere and what we're seeing here would lead us to believe that we're likely to have more flooding. Okay. So instead of sitting to collect uh, relief funds and ecological funds, governors should devote part of it. Let me also say this. When we talk about ecological funds in Nigeria, a lot of people look to the federal. But in, in reality, the money is shared. The ecological fund is intermingled, commingled with the funds that go to the state every month. So they're always getting ecological funds. But on top of the one they receive and the local government, they still come to federal to collect money. Hmm. So we need to use that money judiciously and wisely to foster prevention, get some experts, as the professor said, get some experts who know what they are talking about, create a prevention plan, and be ready for more flooding. Okay. Because it costs you five times more to deal with remediation and response. Yeah.